our speaker this morning. You know, there are some of you that, yes, I agree that um, I'm your daddy. I agree. I have no problem. Right? But there are some people in this church, they don't know anybody else as a pastor. They have never been anywhere else. They, they, so all the mistakes I have done, all the shrubbing that I have done, you know, if there is someone who has copied all the mistakes that I've done and all the success, it's the pastor that's coming to minister to us. But awesome, because he's going to go beyond me. Sindio, ataenda mbele, kwa sana muambea, songe mbele, na mbele. Let's all arise and welcome Brian Mwashigari. Let's him come. Let's appreciate this young man. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together a bit louder if you can put some sound in your mouth and lift the name of Jesus. Come on, you can do better than that if he has been good to you, if he has treated you better than you know you deserve. Lift your voice and glorify the name of the reigning king, the warrior's master, our rescuing knight. His name is Jehovah. For just a few more minutes, won't you lift the name of Jesus? Lord, we exalt you in this house. We declare no one is like you. You are good and your mercies, they endure forever. What a joy, what a great honor and privilege to be found in your house on this beautiful morning, to be known as yours, oh God. What a great joy. You are so worthy and wonderful of every praise you are deserving. No one is like you, Jesus. Oh, we cannot even begin to ask where we would be without you because some of us know that answer full well. We would definitely not be where we are today. We would be dead and gone, but blessed be God because the snare has been broken and we have escaped like a bird in flight. If you had not been on our side, the enemy would have devoured us whole, would have drowned in the waters that the enemy would have set for us. Oh, but we are standing here because you made a way. His name is Jesus. That through that way we can come to you. What a joy. What a great gift and what a privilege. Every praise belongs to you alone. Oh, you are so good, Jesus. If you just take a minute and in your own words, won't you just beautify him, beautify him with extravagant words of praise. Do not worry about the time. Do not worry about it. If you came to church, you better act like it and just lift the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we enthrone your name. Hallelujah. Yes, that's right. That's right. Fill this atmosphere with the praises of the one that died for us. Praises of the one that rose again. Praises of the one that overcame death, hell, and the grave. Fill this place with praises of the one that bought you at such an extravagant price. Fill this place with praises of the one that did not leave us as orphans. The one that released his Holy Spirit. Fill this praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just for a few more seconds, just deck him out with beautiful, beautiful songs, beautiful songs. Oh, if you can speak in the language of the Spirit, go right ahead and beautify him. Bypass your heart and your mind as you call him a great, great name and give him an extravagant worship. both. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Yes. To him who sits on believe that our father is reigning to him who sits on he's seated shiftlessly on his throne he's unperturbed there is nothing that you can bring to him that he cannot handle to he who sits on the throne to him who sits on the throne unto the lamb
everything that we know and that we know not. We proclaim you are lifted. We proclaim you are lifted. You are high and mighty. You are the soon coming king. How we look forward to your coming. We pray that Lord you will teach our hearts to be ready and prepared. That dear God when you come again that we shall be found faithful and waiting oh God. That we shall spend eternity with you after we have lived victorious lives here on earth, that in heaven, in all eternity, we shall live to just lift the one that sits upon the throne to the Lamb of God, who is worthy of every praise and glory and power and authority. We lift you in this house, we lift you in our lives, and we welcome you, Holy Spirit, that you will continue to do your work in this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, put your hands together. the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you give a high five to your neighbors? You descend into the comfort of your seats. Amen, amen, amen. Buona Yesu Asifiwe. Buona Yesu Asifiwe. Are you excited you're in the house today? Are you glad you came to church this morning? Amen, amen. I want to say thank you to the Lord God Almighty for life and for allowing me to stand here this day and to say thank you to my father, Bishop Jimmy Kimani. Um, let's put our hands together and just appreciate this great general in the kingdom. Amen. Here's a fun fact. Just the other day, I was, I was visiting a couple friend of my, a, a couple, hey, a couple friend, as in wamewana nani rafiki zangu. So I was visiting them and it's those families that have books. You know those families that have like the Kibera's library. Kibera is also those families. That's um, the Kibera's library. So they have a library at their home. And so I was looking, I, there's a, an old book. It's very, it's a tiny book. It's not very huge. A really old one. I saw it and I was like, this is interesting. So I pulled out the old book. I like old things. So I was looking at it. And as I was flipping through the pages, I saw Jimmy Kimani. And I was like, wow. Inside where it was, it was, Written and it was talking about the revival, I think, of the 70s and 80s, and his name was there. I was like, Wow, I didn't even read a lot of it. I mean, <laughs> so I'm planning on going back again, but we have, I'm trying to say, we have a great gift in Bishop Dr. Jimmy Kimani, and we bless the Lord for you and we pray for you. Do you pray for Bishop? If you don't. I will not say shame on you, but you need to start today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My name is Brian Moshigadi, as has been said, and I am excited to be here. By the grace of God, I'm a pastor serving in this house under Bishop Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani, and I'm so honored to stand here today. And I honor all the servants of God that are in this place and all of you for coming out. I honor especially Mama Christine, who is also Mama Brian, but nobody calls her that. But you know, Mama Christine, it is... <laughs> Uh, Mom, I love you. And Christine is in the house as well. And Dante is somewhere in the back as well. I saw, yes, I saw him. I thought he was wearing pink. He's wearing black. Okay. Um, I'm mentioning them because that's my crew. That's my peoples. Um, yes. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5. That's where we're going to be sharing just briefly from First Thessalonians chapter 5. It's an interesting portion of scripture if you, if, you, if you come to read it. One of the, one of the first letters that Paul wrote to the churches uh, is in the book of First, is first Thessalonians. And so I'm saying it's interesting because it really is interesting. Um, 
maybe we'll look at, at chapter one, but I want to read this because I want this that it will be, I would like that this be our main text. So it says, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need, it's talking about the day of the Lord, concerning the times and the season, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. For when they say, verse three, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. But you, verse four, brethren, you are not in the darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are not in darkness, brethren. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, you are not in darkness. You, brethren, you are not in darkness such that this day should come and overtake you as a thief. You're all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. If you're those people that write titles for sermons, maybe you will, it will be best to title this one, Awake. All right? And it is, in, it is amazing. We are, we are coming just to this at the end of our 40-day fast yesterday. For some of us, today is that last day. Um, for some people, maybe uh, at 10 days after that. Uh, but wh wherever you are at, this one is, is, is good for us. So awake is what we are going to be calling this just for now. So it says, therefore, verse 6, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or we sleep, we should live forever with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you are doing. I said Paul is writing this letter. It's among his first letters, and as he's writing this letter to the church at Thessalonica, he's writing to them to encourage them, all right? Now, the setting of this letter is interesting. If you go to, uh, because this is, it's pretty much a young church. It's not a very developed one. It's not an old one at the time that he's writing this. So if you go to chapter one, as you find the way he's talking to them, he's telling them what, that uh, we give thanks to you every time. We give thanks, making mention of you in our prayers. This lesson letter is, is coming from Paul and Timothy and Silas. Yeah, you remember the song, Paulo Nasila Waliomba? Do you remember that song? Milango Gereza Kafunguka. It's coming just from around that time. Yeah? Uh, Paul and, uh, and Silas have just been arrested. They've been put in prison. Then they've been released. Then they've gone out to a different city. They've been fukuzwad from, you can find this in the book of Acts chapter 17. They've been thrown out of um, Thessalonica. Then he has actually been snuck out by the believers. He's taken to Berea. Then he goes to Berea and while he's there, the, the Jews at, at the Salonaika, they were terrible people, terrible people, terrible Jews. They had that ule tumefkuza huku wameenda kwa another city. And actually scripture talks about when they are being stuckied, when they are being kushtaki, when they are being reported, when they are being reported, yeah, when they are being reported to the authorities, they are saying that the men who have turned, uh, who are turning around the cities have come here also. And so the people are going, they, they come and throw them away, throw them out of, of Thessalonica. Then Paul is snuck into Berea by the believers. And then he, go, he goes and starts preaching in Berea. And then uh, they come again, they hear that he's in a nearby city. So wametoka Nairobi, Amenda, Thika. Wanaskia ako Thika. Wanakimbia uko pia, wanamfurusha pia uko. It was actually so bad that some of the people who were together with him their houses are being touched. Their houses are being attacked. Like there's a guy called Jason inside there. That his, his house is being even touched down. He's being asked, where is that man? They're looking for him and they could not find him. So what do the believers do after sneaking him out of this place and sneaking him into a, another place? And these people were so bad. I want you to think about it. These people, the Jews at Thessalonica were so bad that they have thrown him out. When Paul goes to Berea, the Bible says that in Berea, he found some people that were better minded. They were better believers. Because they used to study the word. They used to go back and find out what the preacher is saying. Is it written in scripture or is he just speaking his own things? And so they were better believers because of that. That tells me that when you give yourself to the word as a Christian, then you automatically become a better person. 
If you give yourself to the word, to the reading and studying of the word, it changes the way you think, it changes the way you speak, changes the way you act, such that even people that interact with you at your office, at your workplace, these people can know this is a different person. There's something different that happens when you get into scripture. Because if we believe with all our hearts that this word that has been written is the infallible, to mean cannot find fault in, the infallible word of God that cannot be changed, he has spoken. If God has said something, thing in this word, then it shall come to pass. If I know there is such a thing as that, I will invest all my energy into trying to get what does it say. That was the Bereans. So the Bereans were given to scripture and so it naturally changed them such that Paul could find a place to go and stay in when he went there. But the, the Jews, terrible, terrible people, the Jews at Thessalonica, when they heard that Allah, they realized, oh, they cannot organize a strike for themselves. Let us organize for them. Did you know that there were goons for hire? It didn't start with Nairobi University. It started a long time ago. I, 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 there was this chatter that was going on. The people at Daystar, um, I have to be careful because we are live. Um, the people at Daystar, when they were striking, the students, last year, sometime last year, and they were striking and people were saying, at Daystar, we are to strike quickly. Kumbe, we are maneno. And people are saying that there are goons that had been hired from Nairobi University to go and teach them how it's done. Because them, they were, they were walikuwa nanini. So watu anasema, badala watumia GSU, walitumia scouts. Because it wasn't that serious. Anyway, these Jews at, at Berea, the, Jew, the Jews at, um, sorry, the Jews at Thessalonica were like, they were terrible people, goons for hire. So when they had, oh, they, he has come to cause trouble there. Nobody had called them, but when they heard, they decided, oh, let us come and throw him out of there also. So it was so bad that the believers again gathered together and decided the only place that these this Jews will not go is if we put them in a, put Paul in a boat and send him off, off, off to the, into the sea. And so they put him somewhere in a boat and they sent him and they left, he left behind Akina Timothy. So that's, that's the setting of where this church is located. I'm just sharing, that's what we understand. And I said you can find that in the book of, uh, and, and by the way, why, maybe I should mention this, why was, was all this, why were the believers, not the believers, the Jews at Thessalonica, why were they causing so much trouble to Paul, Timothy, and Silas? Why? Because they were working for God, just. They were active believers, they were not asleep. We said that we are talking about awakening, Sindio. These were active believers, Paul and Silas and Timothy. Because what they did, if you go to Acts chapter 16 again, you'll go and find that they were going around doing their own work. And then there was a girl, a fortune teller girl over there, who was going around following them. And what she was saying was, this man, if you go to the book of Acts chapter 16, maybe you should just look at that, because it's really interesting uh, when you find that. Uh, it says, Acts chapter 16... Now as it happened, as we went to prayer, uh, Luke is writing, that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. We had in verse 16 of Acts 16. Um, verse 17, this girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, this man, she was saying the right thing, this man are servants of the most high God who proclaims to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many, many days. But then Paul, one day, he was just greatly annoyed, turned to the spirit and said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Now look at the next verse, it's interesting. But when her masters saw that their hope for profit was gone, <laughs> they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. See, the, so these people are not, that was the only reason. That was the only reason. And I get a lot of... Um, uh, you know, most of us, all of us want to prosper in business. Sindio, it's important that you're asking the Lord that your business might appear like it's a good business, but is it really for kingdom good? Bonas, if you Yesterday I was sharing with somebody as we were talking and we were saying, uh, he was telling me he wants to start a business and something, something, something. And um, when, when we were praying, I was praying and he was agreeing, so we prayed together. When we prayed together, we said that let the Lord cause that business to prosper, especially so if it has a kingdom benefit. Because we want a kingdom, we want, a, we want businesses that will be of benefit to the kingdom. We don't just want to go through our lives, even, even workplaces. When I'm praying for people, when people who are saying they're looking for work, they're going to an interview, when I pray, I always include that in there. Even when I'm praying for myself concerning things, I say, God, send us where you need us the most. Because God will always send us to a place that will benefit the kingdom, not just my selfish needs. 
So anyway, it might be appearing good, but really, it, it, the profit maybe was just for them. It was not for the kingdom. Because there's a reason why Paul got exasperated or got annoyed. Anyway, as you continue, that was the reason why they were arrested. Because they were just going about their father's business. All right? And so that's why they were not worried. You see, if it, will, it would have been a different thing if they had been arrested. Sorry. If they would have been arrested if they were doing a terrible thing. But they were not worried. They were not doing a terrible thing. They were about their father's business. That's why it's important for you every day you wake up in the morning, just before you, you leave your house. You cannot be in such a hurry. When you're talking to the young people, I'm always asking in the youth, in the youth here, we're always asking each other, where are you rushing to? You haven't even prayed, where are you going? You're so late, you're running to work. You don't want to do a jam in a kuanga. It's like you have just been born in Nairobi. You knew traffic was going to be there. Get up early. Spend some time with God. It is much more important. You, see, you, can, you can wake up in the morning and say, I commit all my plans to the Lord. And that's a good thing. You can wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I commit all my plans to you. Today I'm going to meet with so and so. And then in the afternoon I'll go to so and so. And then in the, I'll go to so and so. In the evening I'll come here for the service. And then I'll go and do such and such. It's a good thing to commit your plans to God. But I think it is a much better way of life for a believer. To wake up in the morning and say, Lord, where are you going today that I may go with you? That you're not in such a hurry of going about your own businesses. Because things happen to us, and how many of us know that things can happen to us between you getting up in the morning and you getting to your office or your place of work. Things can happen. And those are things you had not budgeted for when you woke up in the morning. Things can happen. And so, imagine you had just prayed. I had prayed, Lord, I'm coming to service this morning. And then in the afternoon, I'm going to have this meeting. And we have a book launch again in the afternoon. And then I'll go back to the house. As I go about those things, Lord, please be with me. That's a good thing. God is going to be with me. But imagine if there are things that I were unprecedented. I did not know about them. Isn't it better to say, Lord, where are you going today? I'd like to come with you. Such that wherever I find myself, I'm in the business of my father. Such that whatever is happening, I have no cause for alarm. That's what it means when we are singing, I am leaning on the everlasting arms. Because I am in the plan of my father. I am about my master's business. And you know when you're in the master's business, the resources of that business also belong to him. He's taking care of you. Do you remember some time back somebody here shared with us about being a diplomat? Belonging, being an ambassador for Christ. And they said, when I'm an ambassador for Christ, it means that my resources are kingdom resources. It is God that is taking care. The warriors, if you're a warrior for Christ, your, war, your itinerary is best when it is planned by God. That was the case of Paul, Silas, and Timothy and the believers of their day. They were not worried about whether they'll get arrested. They did not know where the day will end. One, uh, they were saying, maybe I'm going to the Salonica, but you never know, I might sleep in a cell just right where we are in this city. But wherever I be, I am okay. That's why Paul is able to say, but I have learned to be content. Whether I have a lot or I have little. Why? Because my lot is Jesus. So wherever Jesus is, I'm good. Vanessa, if you. So if you, if you look now at the setting of where they were, now you're able to, if you, if you're able to understand the letter. Because this, this church had not been planted in a good time. Like us, as we were in a good time. We are in a wonderful time. We have freedom of worship. Nobody is asking you. Nobody is going to, if you can sit in a matatu, you can share with somebody. By there, do you know that Jesus loves you? And that's cool. Nobody is going to arrest you. There are countries. There are places, beloved, where you cannot. I remember some time, a long time ago, I was still in campus. Pastor Millicent shared with us a story. It was a written, I think it was in the newspaper. I can't remember. We were going through it uh, in, our, in our Bible study in the worship team on Tuesday. A long time ago, I don't remember, maybe 2011, I'm not sure. But as we were sharing that, that story said it was about some, some believers in Somalia back in the day, I think a long time ago. And it was saying that, you see that small Kablu Bible, that Gideon's Bible? That Ka Bible, that they, they couldn't, you couldn't be seen with the Bible because that was, that was treason, that was bad, that was murder. So what they did was that when they received the Bible, they used to tear it page by page. So now one page is given to Pastor Sarah, another page is given to Pastor Nzuki, another page is given to Pastor Maureen, another page is given to Mama Nzuki, like that. And then now you go and disperse. When you go, you take that piece of paper, you indulge, you eat it up, unaikula word for word, and then you turn it there, you eat line by line, it is in your heart. Because when you, when you exchange it, you never know when next you will see it. All right. So what will happen? Their means of exchange is that they will take that piece of paper and then they will study it. After you're done, they had a designated day. At the end, of, and you did not have all the time, please. You don't have all the luxury of time. 
So you can you read it during the day. And so in a day there were two exchange points, maybe in a village, if I remember the story correctly. And they used to say that in the morning there was a toilet, a public latrine, somewhere in the Kichaka. And it was for the community. So that was the exchange point. This, in the morning there was exchange and in the evening there was exchange. Such that the one that you took, kutenda uisome jioni, kama ulichukua jioni. Yenye ulichukua subui, tafadhali ukikuja jioni, rudisha. So they would exchange like that. So mimi nikio ni meingia hapo, na ingia na my Acts chapter 16. Ni meisoma yote na the next page, labda yiko na Acts 17. It is, I know it by heart. Ni meikunja na irusha pale in one of the corners zambao na ificha mahali hapo. And then, hapa chini tena nitachukua. Hii likuwa drop off, hii ni pick up. Unawana organization here at the church? As we are disorganized because we are not seeing any problems, we are comfortable where we are. But they will pick up na drop off. So, anachukua hapa chini. Kama alichukua Act 16, 17, hazijafu watana, my friend. Weu unapata hapo sasa umetoka Act 16, unachukua Lamentations chapter 6. Like, my goodness. Hata wezi ukafu watanisha. But imagine God is so faithful because they will pick it up and go with it. You go and eat it up again. By the evening, you've come back again. These are active believers. People who, who, who are not taking for granted what has been given to them. And this is now, now that, that was the, almost a similar setting. It wasn't as bad, but it was almost a similar setting to the book of, of First Thessalonians. When Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica, that's what was happening. So you understand now verse 1 of... of um, of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 1, sorry, you understand when he's saying to them that you became followers of us in verse 6 and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, but with the joy of the Holy Spirit. You see, you could be in affliction as you're receiving something, but so long as your itinerary has been planned by God, there is nothing but joy inside of you. That's why scripture says, be patient in, be joyful in, that's Romans, is it Romans chapter 12? Romans 12? Romans 12, 12. I'm looking at my mom because that's her favorite uh, scripture. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Thank you. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation and be, con be steadfast in prayer. So there's such a thing that the situations around you are not what are defining what is happening inside of you. Just like Paul. That was the situation of the church. Now we are able to understand by the time he's coming to chapter 5 of, of um. First Thessalonians, by the time he's coming to that uh, winding up part of his message, now you understand what he's actually talking about, the day of the Lord, because he has stayed with them. Now, if you read chapter, se chapter 17, again, back to Acts chapter 17, if you read chapter 17, now it's telling you that when he left, um, he went to Thessalonica, and while he was there, he stayed with them for three weeks. So he taught them. It was a three-week revival. And they were there. They were just being taught by Paul. It actually says three Sabbaths. So maybe it was three weeks or maybe it was just three solid Saturdays. And he was just teaching them or Sundays. He was just teaching them and teaching them and teaching them. And the number was being added to them every day. All right? But as they were being taught, there were also other people that were not happy. Remember, we were talking about the Jews, the terrible Jews, terrible, terrible, terrible people back in the day. And so... Um, uh, when he's writing to them now, he's telling them that you received this word that we were teaching you. Though it was in affliction, there was a lot of joy in the Holy Spirit. So he was able now to instruct them and telling them, listen up, I exhort you to do this. I encourage you. And Timothy is telling them, I am strengthened when I receive reports about you, of what you're doing, that you're steadfast, you're praying, you're patient in tribulation. You're not quick to rush to another. You're not quick to kill another brother because they're doing something bad at you. You are steadfast in prayer. You're not, you're not shutting up just because your period of 40 day prayer and fasting is over you're not yet you're not silent you're living a continued fasted lifestyle but you're keeping yourself away from some things because you know there is a day that is coming the day of our lord and savior jesus christ and so paul is telling them continue in that way such that by the time you get to now chapter five now you understand where he's coming from now you understand that where he's coming from, where he's writing this letter, and what is the state of his mind and heart when he's writing to them. So he's speaking to them and he's telling them, listen up, you are not in the darkness. By the time you're receiving this letter, you are children of light. And towards the end he's saying, make sure, please, I charge you that by the Lord, that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. And they continue to read it to the holy brethren until today on the 10th of February in 2019, this epistle is still being read to the holy brethren. So this is good for us. When he's saying this to the church at Thessalonica, he's also saying it to us at DCIKZ. 
Bona sifiwe. So he's reminding us and telling us, listen up, you are not in the darkness. That's why I told you to turn to your neighbor and tell them, tell them you are not in the darkness. Because if it was good for them back in the day, it is good for us even today. You are not in the darkness. You might like to want to act like you're in the darkness, but really that will just be you being complacent. Because you're not in the darkness. Jesus says to the disciples in John 16, 33, I tell you these things so that you may have peace. In this world you will face tribulation. So the reason why scripture has been written to us is so that we cannot be caught in the darkness. When other people are, you see when there's an ambush that is being planned, you are better off for it. Do you remember the story of the walls of Jericho and the story of Rahab, Rahab the harlot? She knew what was coming. And so she was not caught up like the other people. She was prepared. That's what it does. When there's, there's, there's an ambush that is being planned and you are in the know, you cannot be caught up like other people. But if you're caught up like the other people, who is to blame? No, who is to blame? Yourself. You are to blame. So for us believers, when things are coming to us, we cannot afford to act like we have not been warned. We know what is coming. We know what is coming. God has prepared. There is a terrible day that is coming. That final day. It is coming. Whether we like it or not, it is coming. But us, we have an advantage. Scripture says that we have been chosen for something different. It continues to say, verse 9, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through Christ our Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot sit around like nothing is coming. Awake. You have got to be awake. Just because the peace, and, and you see I'm saying this also carefully because not all of us were in the period of praying and fasting, but you see, whether you are in it or not, you cannot afford to be not awake. You cannot be asleep. How can you be asleep? No, really, what are you doing if you're not spending time with God? You, you ought to be in prayer at all times. It says, be persistent in prayer. Romans 12, 12. Be continuous. And you see, today in service, as we were singing, we were saying, hallelujah, you have overcome. Um, you, have, you have won it all for me. Then it said, death could not hold you down. You are the reason, king. If this is true, if these words are true, then I have every reason to talk to God. Because I want to talk to somebody who overcame death, hell, and the grave. I have every reason to go to him. If it is true that hakuna mwingine kama he, because we sing songs, but maybe they are not coming from our heart, because if they really came from our heart, then I would have every reason to talk to him. Amen. This is one that has overcome. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 4, we do not have a high priest who, does not, who is untouched by the feeling of our infirmities, but one who was tested in every way, but without sinning. That tells me, in every way I might be tested. There is one that has already gone ahead and he has overcome. That's someone I can go to with every one of my issues. Whether it is problems in the marriage, whether it is problems in my home, in my school, at my place of work. There is absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing that Jesus cannot handle because he was tested in every way, yet without sinning. Therefore, I have every confidence. So, if I know this is true, why then am I not talking to him? Why am I not spending more time with Jesus? Why am I acting like I wasn't warned? Why am I, when things have come, why am I, my first resort should be prayer. Not last resort. It's something that we always share in the youth ministry. And I always say, one of my favorite movies of all time is a movie called War Room. Why? Because it's different. You see, the Nigerian movies for a very long time growing up, they used to te teach us that prayer is the last resort. Kwa sababu mganga ameingia, ametorosha, mevunjiwa kila kitu, mama ameachana, baba ametoka, ameenda kwa mama mwingine, things have happened, you're just in a terrible place. So the family has broken down until it can no longer be broken down. Then that's the time you see some fellowship believers are entering, who oh, is wonderful, is Jesus, who oh, is, that's the time they are coming to pray. And then they pray, alafu something happens, and then nyoka inatokeleze, alafu sasa, now they're like, oh, hallelujah, and then you'll see glory to God. The last five minutes are showing you that prayer truly works. But no, 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 no. There's something better. Prayer is my first resort. I can call on that name at any time. The Bible says in Psalm 46, the name of the Lord, eh, he's an ever-present help in times of need. That's what it says. Proverbs 18:10. the name of the Lord is a strong and mighty tower. I do not run to the tower. Listen, when an animal is being hunted, it most likely will run to its hiding place. Does it run after you have already stri struck it the first time? Does it wait? 
It doesn't even need for you to hunt it. I mean, si wewe ndio umechukua kuku. Huyo kuku unamweka kwa sababu ya mayai. Kwa hivyo hata hutaki kumuua. Lakini huyo kuku ukipita hivi vibaya, anakimbia. Hangoji ati umshike umchinje na kisu kidogo hivi ndio asikie he huku ni kubaya anakimbia. But as believers we are treating prayer like the last resort instead of being found in the name of Jesus at all times. We are not waiting for trouble to come. I'm thinking mbona nasikia ni kama kunaweza kuwa na shida. Wacha nikimbilie hapo. That should be our that should be our life being found in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something that is better than running to the name of Jesus is being found in the name of Jesus. All the time that day and night I'm inside there. Come rain, come sunshine. That when trials and tribulations come, they find me right in that name because the name of Jesus is a safe place to be. Bona sefiwe. You cannot not be in Jesus. I mean if you're not in Jesus, where are you? A friend of mine Ben Solo, he we are, we are always asking each other that those people who don't know Jesus what do they do no where do they go to when they have when they're having a bad day who do they go to and when they're having a good day when it's the best day of your life who do you run to to a human being that's not well that's just simply won't work because there are days that I have had the best day in the world and I want to run to my father in the vision pastor Kibera and I want to go and tell him listen this has happened this is a great day and him he's had the single most worst day of his life so he's trying to be happy for me He's really trying. He's like, "Oh, glory to God." And you see Kibera is always smiling. He's always happy. Like, "Oh, glory, wonderful." Oh. He will speak in tongues for a few minutes and then he will be But I want somebody who will feel it with me. Do you know the joy of sharing with somebody and they're like, "Oh my God." You cannot not be found in Jesus. And that's why he's telling them, "You my brothers are not in darkness." you have you, you cannot be caught up when the other, when distraction comes imagine when the trumpet sounds on that final day and then when everybody is like oh my goodness what is happening even you you are there with the other unbelievers what is happening what you have been you know it's coming you know it's coming let's not even fast forward to the com- the day of the coming of our lord because we don't know when it's going to be something is happening in your family people are falling apart unaenda family gathering yenye mlikuwa mmeenda ni family gathering lakini mkitoka it was really a family scattering have you do you know those meetings do menda temperature kila mtu imepanda chumvi na sukari zote zimepandishwa juu everybody is living you don't even want to see each other hata wewe ulikuja ukiwa umebebwa na gari yako yako amekasirika akaenda ukabaki hapo peke yako unashindwa so nitafika aje Nairobi those kinds of things when that is happening and you're a believer in that family you cannot act like you did not know at some point it was going to come because what do humans do humans act like humans we disappoint that's why we need a savior Amen. one who does not disappoint one that is constant you see one uh, there's, there's this story in scripture i hope i can find it real quick there's this um, passage in scripture that talks about paul when he was going to the on the island of malta Have you have you read that story? Paul on the island of Malta. I don't know where I can find it. Anybody that knows where we can get that? But anyway, let me just go back to it. I'll find it in a bit. Uh, Paul when he was going at the when he was at the island of Malta. You see the Bible says when he was arriving at that place that the people the, the natives of that island when they saw them they were filled with a lot of compassion and they went and they received them oh my goodness please come and they invited them and they lighted a fire so paul is collecting the nini and then he was bit by a snake and the people were like oh this man is cursed he is a devil he is going to die in fact the wrath is of god is so against him he's going to die and then soon after that he shakes it down it goes down and they wait for him he does not die and they're like oh truly this is one of the gods this is a gr- human beings change like that One minute they're like oh you are the best man in the whole world we cannot believe where were you all my life even your whole husband is still a human being your own wife your boyfriend your girlfriend I cannot be a family oh imagine my boyfriend has said this imagine my girlfriend has said imagine my wife my wife of 10 years she has said that to me how can she oh news flash human being you got married to a human being Imagine those ones those days they were saying <laughs> listen up this man is great welcome we love you and then two minutes later they're like oh you are a devil you are going to die look the way death is following you everywhere two seconds later like, Allah this is truly, truly a god human beings change like that 
So when things are happening, when people in your family are falling apart, when your boss is standing against you and you're like, me, I'm the one that is always in the being told I'm in the wrong and I'm always the one that is in the wrong. No, you're spending time in the wrong place. Make noise where it matters most. Go to the master. Talk to Jesus. Be found in him. Bonus if you let me just try and wrap this up because we do not have the time. It says, but let us, I'm sorry, therefore let us not sleep, verse, verse 6, therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Turn to your neighbor, tell them awake. Come on, turn to someone, tell them awake. You cannot afford to not be awake. You have got to be up. You have got to be alive. You have got to be awake. We are sons of the light. We have been warned. We know it is coming. You have got to be alive and active such that whether it comes good or bad, you are good because you are in Jesus. Have you realized that we say God is good and we don't say God is the best? Why? Because there is no comparison for him. He is good. He's the superlative of everything good that we know, so he really is good. To sleep, to sleep, when, when it says let us not sleep, to sleep is to be indifferent. To sleep is to be lethargic. You're not affected by the things that are happening. Even in your family, you're, just, you're, just, you're not doing anything. When I say not being affected, I don't mean you're, the, the, you're always the one reacting. Because you can be the one reacting, but you're really the one that's sleeping the most. We're talking about it in matters of spiritual realities, all right? When things are happening in your family, you can't be the one that says, No. It doesn't mean you're the one that is most awake. No. The one that is awake is the one that is, you see something and you know, Oh, devil, I saw you. Nili kuone aitin. Nili juo uki. But I know that I am guarded. The Bible says, but you therefore, Ephesians chapter 6, verse uh, 11, because you do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and spiritual uh, um, authorities in high places. Put on therefore the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. So you're, you're prepared. You're prepared when it comes. So to be asleep is to be just lethargic. You, you could be least bothered. I don't care what it happens. Ah, ah, whatever will be, will be. You know, ah, if it will happen, if it was meant to be, it's going to be. You, you, mm, that's not a spiritual saying. It's not in scripture. We can cause things to happen. Did you read the book of Hebrews chapter 11? It says that these men through faith, and Bishop Bulimu shared with us on Friday, they toppled kingdoms. They made systems work. They wrought justice. They did things. They turned over cities. You can't just sit and say, ah, this Kenya will just be, whatever will happen, let me just tell you. You see, we are just giving this Kenya some time. Because whoever will be in power will only be in, then you say, Kenya is governed in boardrooms. Or you can create your own boardroom in heaven. You can decide, I am, I am not just going to sit like that. Kenya is governed by boardrooms. Oh, I am stepping myself into that place of the boardroom. I'm a board member of Kenya. I am the one that's decide. You can decide who is president. Before the polls, don't wait for the 2022. Do you see, these people have already started restructuring. See, Saizi, all we are talking about is elections, 2022. any governing, CGI structures, and a referendum, and I don't know what. You are waiting for 2022, so you can be like, oh God, so that you can call for a 49-day fast, 58-day fast. So that you can call for a 58-day fast in your own home. Don't wait for that time. Do not be asleep, brethren. Be awake. Amen. Be awake. Charles Spurgeon preached um, something and he was saying that he painted three pictures of what being asleep means. And one picture he says, a city suffers under a plague with an official walking in the streets crying out, bring out the dead, bring out the dead. All the while, a doctor with a cure sleeps. All the while, the doctor that has the cure in his pocket sleeps, but the city is being ravaged outside. Picture number two, a passenger ship reels under a storm and it is about to crash on the rocks, bringing near certain death to the hundreds of passengers. All the while, the captain sleeps. And then my, the third and my favorite, a prisoner in his cell is about ready to be executed. His heart is terrified at the thought of hanging from his neck, terrified of death and what awaits him after death. All the while, a man with a letter of pardon for the condemned man sits in another room and sleeps. Imagine what other things the devil is doing while we sleep as believers. True, something has been plotted against you, something has been plotted against your family. The enemy, he's looking for someone to devour and he's not looking in my family alone. Surely he's looking even in your family. 
He's not looking just in my place of work. He's even looking even in your place of work. He's looking for someone to defer. But you, believer, you cannot afford to be like you're in darkness. You're sleeping the entire time. No. Arise and do something. It's not about the time, the amount of time you spend in prayer or the language that you'll use or how you're doing it. All that matters is that you're constantly talking to the master. Don't you ever, ever allow yourself to be found in a place where you cannot pray. Whether it is a physical place or a, a location in your mental real estate. Don't you allow yourself. At now I can't pray because things are so bad now I can't pray. Never, it should never be said of any believer that you're in a place where you can't pray. Because prayer is not the word. You can pray inside. The Bible says the Holy Spirit, Romans 8, 26, intercedes for us in groans too deep for words. Not even using words. Groans too deep for words. Groans. If that is the Holy Spirit, then I can do it as well. I can just intercede in my spirit for the people around me. Awake in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you will teach our hearts and our minds to be stayed on you. That we will refuse completely to be found asleep. That when the roll is called up yonder, dear God, that we will be found awake and alert, having turned kingdoms around, having affected our communities and societies, having sought our hearts inside and brought down and demolished barricades of sin that, and boulders that we will be hiding behind, oh God, in our hearts. We will have worked on other people, but we will also have worked on ourselves. So that when all is said and done, we will spend eternity with you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.